Hey Chef, g'day. Sunday night. Uh, I've just finished up my first fringe show of the season, drinking wines on stage with a couple of comedians, which is super fun. So let's call it Fruity Gordo and put it in boxes and sell it to the same company. So full disclosure, I've had a couple of wines. The plan this week though, is that we're gonna make a spicy chicken sandwich. Mm. Good though. And the guys from Del Quinte Wines are coming up to visit us at Unico tomorrow. So I hit them up during the week and said, hey, uh, I want to make a spicy chicken sando. Do you have any wines that you think would pair well with that? So they're going to bring one along. We're going to see if they can uh, find a pairing. I'm also going to get one of the wines from our winery to try with this chicken sandwich at the end. Spicy chicken sandwich, three wines. I reckon I can pair it. Del Quinte reckons I can pair it. You guys reckon you can pair it. Let's see who does the best on Ui Chef. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the buttermilk Oh, buttermilk is sour. Bit of cayenne, a bit of salt and pepper, and pickle juice in a big Tupperware container, or several large Tupperware containers. And then I'm gonna put the chicken in there. That's gonna marinate overnight in the fridge. Uh, then with the breading, I'm literally just gonna put some flour. How much of this am I gonna need? Fuck, I don't know. I'll just do all of that, I suppose. Mom, if you're watching this, I promise I will buy you more flour. <laughs> corn flaky spicy things that I found in mum's kitchen in with some salt and pepper, put it in an airtight container so it's ready to go for tomorrow. Mayonnaise is gonna be fun. Um, so basically I'm gonna crack two eggs, put a globe of garlic in, juice half a lemon in, put some salt and pepper in, a little bit of sugar and a little bit of Dijon. And then the recipe was really specific about using this sort of thing to uh, actually make the mayonnaise. So it's like a bar mixer thing. And then it said to use a well-fitting vessel to make the mayonnaise in. But mum's cup of that broke ages ago, so she doesn't have one. What she does is this cocktail shaker, and like the fitment on this thing is just unreal. So we're gonna use that, then it's gonna get blitzed a little bit. Then I'm gonna pour two cups of vegetable oil in. Hey Siri, can you make mayonnaise with peanut oil? And then just like blend it and slowly start coming up to the top. Literally, the video I watched was insane. It literally just turns into mayonnaise. I don't really understand it, but like, I'm keen to try making mayo. Holy shit, it's actually working. <laughs> this is insane. Hey Siri, how to get mayonnaise out of cocktail shaker? Uh, then with the spice mix, I'm gonna combine uh, about a tablespoon of brown sugar, half a teaspoon of paprika, a tablespoonish of cayenne pepper, teaspoon of garlic powder. It's gonna go into a Tupperware container slaw, mixed with the mayonnaise, and then it's gonna go onto those brioche buns, which are gonna be toasted and delicious. It's Sunday night now at like 9.30, and like I'm tired and a little bit drunk, but I'm sure it'll go well, so yeah. I'm just gonna get down and do that stuff now, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, day two of the spicy chicken cook. We're on the way up to Unico Celador at the moment. We're gonna meet up with Delacuente and do the tastings. We're gonna finish the crumbing of our chicken. So that's gonna be a matter of pouring some of that brine that we made last night into another bowl. Because I'm actually gonna double coat the chicken. So taking the chicken out of there into the flour and cornflake mix, back into the brine bowl, then back into the flour breading mix. So you've got like double layers of crunch. Then once I've done that to all the fillets, it's going to be into my fry pot. I'm gonna fry using a combination of vegetable oil and lard. Uh, read up online and apparently both of them have a really high smoke point, but if you use lard, you just get this really nice sort of juicy pig fat flavor in there as well, which you know me, I like a bit of pig fat from time to time. Don't have a meat thermometer, so I'm just gonna have to vibe out how long it's gonna take to cook the chicken. Feels like they're only thighs, so they should cook relatively quickly. Um, it's gonna be up at about 190 degrees Celsius, so maybe it, I don't know, four, five minutes. So we'll take the first one out after five minutes, cut it open and check it and see if it's not medium rare because we don't want to be serving medium rare chicken. Uh, after that, buns are gonna come out. My little uh, brioche buns that I've got here. Is that the right way up? That's the right way up. Little brioche buns going into the fry pan just to get a nice toast on there. Always toast your buns, apparently. It keeps them from going soggy. No one likes a soggy bun. 
with the spice mix that we made up last night, after we finished frying the chicken, we're gonna ladle out some of that hot, beautiful vegetable and pig fat oil on top of the spice mix, stir that up, and then brush the chicken with it to give it that angry, red hot, fiery sort of look and taste, hopefully. Really hope I haven't buggered up how spicy it is. It'll be hilarious if these are just way too hot for anyone to eat. Uh, and then the final thing we're gonna do is assemble them. So toasted buns, cheese, hopefully on a warm bun so it melts a little bit. Maybe a little bit of mayo on the top and bottom bun. Chicken patty on with the hot oil brushed over the top of it. Coleslaw mixed through with the mayo, burger bun on top, and bada bing, that should be it. So that's what I'm gonna be doing for the next hour or so once I get up to work. Hopefully it turns out well. I need to stop saying hopefully. I'm confident this is gonna turn out well. Oh, one's got double buns for good about it. It's fine. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll see what goes well with it. Is it gonna be sparkling? Is it going to be light red? Or is it gonna be orange wine? Uh, and then, actually, someone in the comments, uh, Door Explorer, on the last video, I mentioned that I was doing chicken sando this time around, and they suggested a bougie sparkling to cleanse the palate, uh, something Chardonnay-based. Uh, also, another shout out to another person in the comments, um, My Mikael, Michael? Mikael, Michael plays guitar. He said I need a cooking wine. So, I got one. The Stoke Field Blend. This is really cool. It's in the show that we're doing. The bottle was open, so I didn't want to waste it. So, I'm gonna be drinking this. It's a really nice little chilled red thing out of KI. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. Mm. That wine is fucking delicious. Maybe Greg could do the intro and you <laughs> yeah, can I'll say, I'm, I'm, I'm the I'm boss. Greg, <laughs> and these are my children. <laughs> My name's Greg, I'm from Delacuente Wine Company. I've got my colleagues Michael and Millie here. Howdy. And Hello. we're gonna eat some chicken burgers and drink some wine and see what we think. Thanks. Thank you, mate. Another one. <laughs> so it looks like you're eating an English muffin. All right. Beautiful looking chicken burgers, some cracking wine. Classic pairing with fried chicken, yeah. Chardonnay, sparkling wine. Uh, yeah, taste. Pretty yum, mate. It's got a good amount of heat to it. Yeah, I think the bubbles always cut through, cut through spice really well. This is Fiano from the same vineyard, same patch of dirt that the Yucazillo um, Fiano comes from, from the Riverland. It's a pretty fruity wine. There's a lot of aromatics. Yeah, you need something a little bright as well to cut through the oiliness. It tastes really good, it smells really nice. It adds a bit of complexity to the burger. Uh, Esoterico. This is this is the one though. This is the it's Australia's most popular wine. Yeah, yeah. This is this is what all the kids are drinking and have been for a long time. To be to be honest, I, I prefer the the Fiano. Wait, hold on. It's not. I feel um, like it doesn't have as much acidity as this one. Tell us about this wine, Greg. Uh, Rosé, so a little blend, um, Alianico, Neridabolo, sort of same yeast of. Um, a fleet off of the red ferments, and then some skin contact in Alvazia Bianco. Thrown in there just to give it a little bit more floral lift, but you know, try to make, I suppose, a dry rose that's got that little bit more sort of uh, herbaceousness and, and structure to it, sort of grips a little bit more of the palate. Yeah, you're right, it doesn't have as much of a, like a cutting presence. You want something that's got that, the, this kind of acid that's gonna just break through what you're feeling in the mouth. I think for me, it's it's not going to be the sparkling. The sparkling's a little bit too much. Like it's bouncing off the heat that I'm feeling from the burger, and it's kind of you can do that, right? Like bubbles, like, oh, like sort of yeah. Like if it's going to be bubbles, it's heat. got to be like a beer where it's not as yeah. It's got a creamier vibe, and it's kind of yeah. But you can see I think that. it's between the two of these. I think it is definitely between here. the two. Like I would be more than happy with either of those two alongside mm. a delicious sandwich. Are you doing the diplomatic thing where you don't choose either? You know it! <laughs> How good? My wife would say, uh, you're fence sitting again, Greg. Uh, I would say, I can't stand Okay, so fence. if you didn't want to be a fence sitter <laughs> in this situation, which would you choose? If I didn't want to be a fence sitter, I'd probably. I, I, you know what? I can drink that all the time. Right now, I want to drink this. The clarity is really nice in that. It is nice. Like mm. the. Beautiful. Yeah, the freshness. Yeah, whereas that is a bit rounder, perhaps. Yeah. So diplomatically, we're going to say. We're definitely going to say the Unico Zello wine. Yeah. 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 Unico Zello wine. Wait, do we work for Unico Zello now? <laughs> we all work for Unico Zello in some way or another. All right, so. 
verdicts in on my chicken burger. The guys liked all of the wines. They were a little bit off the sparkling thing, but to be fair to the person who suggested this sparkling, you did say, let's get something bougie, not let's get something Blanc de Blanc from the Adelaide Hills. So I'd imagine if it was a slightly creamier champagne, it would have worked a little bit better. But the thing that they said was Esoterico. I assume they weren't just playing favorites, which is an orange skinsy thing. And their second favorite was the Fiano, which is also in that skinsier white territory. So I think that's the takeaway. If you want to have a hot chicken burger and you want to pair it with a wine, the answer, go for something a little bit skinsy, something a little bit turbulent. Turbulent is not the word, turbulent? I don't know, whatever he said. So that's it, Ui Chef, episode two in the books. Spicy chicken, orange wine, great pairing. We'll see you next time. Comment below if you've got a wine or a food that you think I should attack next. You've seen my cooking skills, so keep it relatively easy, but we'll catch you in the next one, guys. Cheers.